Good morning. It's 10 a.m. on November 21, 2023. We'll call to order the meeting of the Story County Board of Supervisors. Please stand with me if you're able to say the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Do I have a motion to adopt today's agenda? So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Merkin. Aye. Edens. Aye. Basil. Aye. Now it's time for public comment number one. This comment period is for the public to address topics on today's agenda. Anyone wishing to make public comment? You can step forward to the table or raise your hand on Zoom. <clears throat> Seeing no one step forward or raise their hand, we'll close public comment number one and move to consideration of proclamation recognizing November 25, 2023 as Small Business Day. Uh, Supervisor Merkin. Whereas America's strongest economic growth in almost 40 years has been driven by the resilience of our small businesses, which despite a worldwide pandemic, continue to pioneer innovative solutions to our country's greatest challenges and create opportunities for families and workers, and whereas from the storefront shops that anchor Main Street to the high-tech startups that keep America on the cutting edge to the small manufacturers driving our competitiveness on the global stage, small businesses are the backbone of our economy and the cornerstone of our nation's promise. And whereas when we support small businesses, jobs are created and local communities preserve their unique culture. And whereas because this country's 32.5 million small businesses create nearly two out of three jobs in our economy, we cannot resolve ourselves to create jobs and spur economic growth in America without discussing ways to support our entrepreneurs. And whereas Story County supports and joins in this national effort to help America's small businesses do what they do best, grow their businesses, create jobs, and ensure that our local communities remain vibrant tomorrow as they are today. Now, therefore, be it resolved that we, the Story County Board of Supervisors, to hereby proclaim November 25th, 2023, a small business day in Story County and encourage all citizens to support local businesses' growth and retention. I move the proclamation. Second. Moved and seconded. Heddens. Aye. Merkin. Aye. Basil. Aye. Uh, for agency reports, uh, environmental health quarterly report does not look like we have Kimberly on Zoom or um, in the room. Do we want to just... Um, Skip over it and see if she's coming or just approve it now. Okay, we'll just skip over. Okay, we'll skip it. All right, um, consideration of minutes. I move approval of minutes of 11 14 and the canvas minutes. Second. Moved and seconded. Merkin. Aye. Pedans. Aye. Basil. Aye. Consideration of personnel action. I move approval of personnel action. Action items as listed. Second. Moved and seconded. Pedans. Aye. Merkin. Aye. Basil, aye. Consideration of claims. I move approval of claims as presented. Second. Moved and seconded. Merkin. Aye. Pedans. Aye. Basil, aye. Consent agenda. I move approval of consent agenda items as listed. Second. Moved and seconded. Pedans. Aye. Merkin. Aye. Basil, aye. We have no public hearing items, additional items, discussion and consideration of sheriff's office for office to purchase patrol vehicles for FY24. We we have no one from the sheriff's office here this morning or on Zoom either. Um, let's move meeting. to the second item, discussion and consideration of modifications to the Coop Cog. Good morning, Leanne. <clears throat> The item before this morning, or before the board this morning, is um, our proposed modifications to the continuity of operations plan, continuity of government, the Coop Cog, um, that is adopted by the Board of Supervisors. It is based on um, feedback and comments we received following the activation with COVID-19. Just a high-level review of the changes. Uh, there are definitely cleanup matters. Uh, one also being that the largest portion, Annex um, 22 or 23, is being removed. That's all the office and department specific. Uh, we propose and recommend that annually the county outreach and special projects manager 
outreach to the uh, department heads and elected officials a form to allow them to fill out and really um, continue to monitor their own portion of the COOPCOG as an office department specific. Uh, we've found through the activation and then years since we adopted this, that's the largest piece to keep current. And if it's part of the formal um, COOPCOG, any small change requires action by the Board of Supervisors. And I'm not sure that's the appropriate role, nor do I sure, am I um, sure the board wants to be in that role. And if one staff member changes, you have to take action on the whole COOPCOG. Um, I'll be glad to go over the specific changes or just answer any questions you may have. Um, whatever your pleasure. Um, one of, I'll, I'll be honest, it's been a really busy week and I did not get through the entire thing, but I had, I did get through all the feedback. And there were a couple things that I saw there that I wondered if you had made changes in the body of the plan about. One of them was, I think what I was reading was that the CCMT meetings, and I think they were supposed to be daily and we ended up doing them weekly, but that as the pandemic went on or as anything, and I know this was longer than a normal kind of threat, you know, that we're dealing with, but there wasn't much flexibility. We kept doing it once a week, whether we needed to or not. And I just wondered if you wrote in any flexibility of frequency and and who's at CCMT meetings, if you address that when you went through the plan. Um, I'll stop there. Yeah. So in chapter or section, I need to quit saying chapter. Get to the right one. Section 12, the resource management of the activated plan. It's not um, directly written in the flexibility. I think that should just be part of the activation. Um, mm -hmm. it, it, it needs to be defined tied to the hazard that's triggering the activation. Mm -hmm. um, and what we did do though was rather than clearly saying that um, the chair of the Board of Supervisors is the chair of the CCMT, set up the structure a little bit different that there are co-chairs. Because as you read through the comments, the concern was voiced, it seemed like another Board of Supervisors meeting. And it did end up being kind of like it did that. It. And mm -hmm. I, I think the board definitely has a key role as you are the ultimate decision maker on the allocation of resources to be in a leadership role in the CCMT, but should not be solely chairing the CCMT. And so we, I set up a, a, a co-chair position and that's reflected through chapter or section 12 um, that the chair or the vice chair would serve as a co-chair. I think, um, unfortunately it's gonna be one of those unless you're activated to, we don't, or test it, train on it. We don't know how that will definitely work. Uh, but I, th I think I, I'm confident that's a good solution to go forward with and try. I think so because you could be fairly flexible as a, you know to what the emergency is, and rather than say some department head always serves or, or somebody from board of supervisors office can say what are we really going to need mm -hmm. for this threat in terms of expertise and that, and we could. I think that's I think that's good, and I think also it just seems like. We just need to be a little more flexible. I think this is the first time that we we um, you know activated mm -hmm. the CCMT, so we're pretty much kind of like we got this. We better follow it, and kind of you know coloring within the lines. And when I was reading the comments, I was looking back and I was thinking, yeah, I wish we had been a little more flexible. And I, I think things. that's part of that's part of the lessons learned that we'll mm -hmm. take forward if it is activated again. What do the report? What does the reporting structure look like? And we we learned that as we went as well. We went from daily cumbersome email or Excel reports to using our our online forms. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, and clarifying and, the nature of the reporting. What is a report? What's expected to for the CCMT to be aware of? And that's again hazard dependent. Yeah, and that weekly report. I think we could have modified that earlier, done some different things with that because I think we were. 
asking people to do, there just wasn't stuff to put on. Mm -hmm. The other thing I would say, and I was glad to see your comment that the essential functions were not, were staying within the body because that was the thing that was most helpful, I think, with the pandemic. The other thing I would suggest is that we don't just dump this feedback and comments section because I think it might be useful if we, you know, the next time we have to activate the CCMT, you know, to go back and look at the things, remind ourselves again of the things that worked and didn't work the last time. Specific yeah. comments that are made, mm -hmm. not just make the changes in plan exactly. itself, but exactly. Then have that. Exactly, because they might help us with doing that tailoring mm -hmm. for the next time we need to activate it. So I, I found it fascinating. Some of the things you said, and I was thinking back, going, oh yeah, that did seem kind of clunky, or yeah, I think we wasted people's time doing this or that. And... Leanne, I did have one question, and I too had had like everyone else, just the incredibly busy week and stuff. Did you? I know the the um, Kuka before referenced the pan, a pandemic, mm -hmm. but really didn't have a whole lot in that because we hadn't ever experienced. Did you elaborate more? Yeah, um, on that. As best as I thought was appropriate. Um, so if you look on section one, the introductions, um, page one. So th all three of the comments in this section relate to right an, a hazard such as a pandemic or related. Um, so at first, first comment is um, enabling essential accounting functions to continue when there's catastrophic catastrophic emergency or series of events or conditions such as a pandemic. Um, and then if you go down lower on the, the page, um, reference again to the pandemic requiring, um, wait, yeah. Continuity of operations during a pandemic requires using existing continuity plans and strategies and more adaptive ways to address unique operational requirements to include employee health, social distancing, and widespread absenteeism. So again, trying to keep some guidance, but some flexibility, but um, really the, the last part of this section too adds, uh, I think, the greatest contribution regarding pandemics. I won't read that for everyone, but um, it, it references the impact of human resources. And it, I don't mean the department or the office, but at our human resources capital as employees and how those need to be um, built into the, into the whole um, activation and whether telework or virtual environments is needed. So I think that in and of itself, those changes within the section should help bring us forward. And I see on section eight, page two, and under alternate operations, you said alternate means of providing services as well as alternate facility. And that obviously fits with what we did with the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, unfortunately, I just don't think our past pandemic is the last. Right, the last Not one. Not from what we've been reading in the papers. No. Omicron is yeah. still with us, as we know. Um, the other thing in terms of the annex is putting the responsibility with the department heads and elected officials. I think it's really gonna be who was for the special projects manager to annually follow up with everybody because that's something that's gonna get, just because everyday operations is what takes your time, that's gonna get low on the, you know, so I think if, you know, when we have a new special projects manager and, you know, Sandra can talk with the person about that when we get, you know, that, it's like, you know, it's September by December, you're supposed to have this done, you know, and help them get through that just to make sure that we keep all those annexes updated and they don't become something that everybody forgot about. Um, one thing I failed to mention too, the um, prior, prior plan had the risk management mm -hmm. position as a backup for the backup CCMT mm -hmm. coordinator to the County Outreach and Special Projects Manager. This position has, uh, or this draft has the human resources coordinator, who is Stephanie. I think mm -hmm. that's, and that's, I, I feel that's, yep, um, I saw that. So that's, I, th I think that's good to have too, too deep in that yeah. for the CCMT mm -hmm. coordinator. Yeah. Mm. Okay. I got through all the changes now. I've reviewed it. 
for the record, I've reviewed it now. Um, it This is really a good job, Leanne. This is, um, I mean, I think we're the first county that ever had a KUKOG. I think this one's still on the ISAC mm -hmm. website. Yes. I suppose we want to update that. I do. I want to talk to them at some point in my free time. On, <laughs> yeah, that may, that that may, <laughs> may be okay. a good, a good um, connection for me to make with a new county outreach and special projects manager in ISAC to build some relationships. Yeah. And let right. them. Um, the next steps, if you adopt today, will be um, staff will go in and update the documents. And uh, I'll work with Stephanie to see if we can get all the elected officials and department heads in with their flash drives, if they still have them. And we're only going to do flash drives, mm -hmm. update those. Um, if they don't have them, we may have to buy some more flash drives. And then it'll be in different areas on our internally that we can access, but locked down. Mm -hmm. I think the flash drives works well. Yeah. And I did just notice on section 16, the reconstitution. That's that's oh, yeah. something that was significant and very, I think would be very useful. Um, the In that section, all the return to normal operations is directly edited mine, with some minor edits from what we did with the return operations for the COVID or for the COVID mm -hmm. um, yep. activation. Mm -hmm. okay. We certainly did learn a lot, didn't we? Mm -hmm. I think I think it ran as smoothly as it could for a situation that none of us had ever experienced before. Oh. Having this guidebook was very helpful. And I do think it's very helpful that we got the feedback that we have of what worked or didn't. Mm -hmm. Um because you know, we were just kind of flying by the seat of our pants right through through this. Mm -hmm. I think the thing that was most helpful, because I did, I just kind of we all panicked. What do we do? So took the whole thing home, took the whole manual home. And when I found the essential functions, I thought that is really the most important thing in here is knowing what you have to keep going and who it is. And that might be another thing that, you know, as well as the annexes, that it might be good to have departments look at, you know, annually and say, are I mean, because we've gone through some changes and it's probably going to be mostly the same, but it's really good to have that updated. And their their record keeping as well. And the record oh. keeping, yes, mm -hmm. for sure. Those are the those are the area areas where we anticipate the most changes. Mm -hmm. so you never know what FEMA or the state or whatever is going to want <laughs> for data. <laughs> Do you, I have just one question. Mm -hmm. Do you have any kind of a history of the decisions we made during the pandemic? Um, all the, yes, all the agendas are saved. Um, all the closed session Zooms are on a flash drive, I believe. I, I, I have a file in my office that when the new county outreach and special projects manager is brought on board and they're ready to assume full responsibility, I will hand over, but it'll be more organized than what it is. Right. Okay. And I had a bunch of stuff and it was not very organized. And I kind of relied on that. You probably had it all because it was you, when you're going through something like that, you want to keep it all, but it, it's, you're going so fast. It doesn't, mm -hmm. you don't mm -hmm. end, necessarily end up with it in as good order as you'd like. And you look at it and say, what is this? I have no idea. Yeah. On, on, because all the, all the CCMT meetings are subject to open meetings. Mm -hmm. And once we went to closed session, those are all, archived on our website and then again I think it's maybe even the board's g driver on the s drive we didn't do minutes of those though did we um I can't remember I think we started and then we got opinion it wasn't necessary yeah there was just too yeah, much that's... going on to document everything every time you turned around yeah so it was great it was yeah we learned a lot I think everybody pulled together I think everybody was really patient with the process, which was an excellent thing because it was, we were all just kind of feeling our way with it. Mm -hmm. But I think that the county did a great job and I, and we wouldn't have been able to do it if it weren't for this document, Leanne. Mm -hmm. So thank you again for- You're welcome. For Any other questions? I do not. All right. 
We need a motion. D and D. I make a motion to adopt the modifications to the coop cog. Second. Moved and seconded. Headens. Aye. Merkin. Aye. Basil. Aye. We flip back to item seven, agency reports. Sure. And we have environmental health quarterly report. Good morning. Good morning. Sorry, I was late. I had a, another meeting that ran over and I couldn't get out. No worries. So, um, all right. Well, I submitted my quarterly report to you guys and just kind of wanted to highlight a few things. All the programs in general are going well. We're doing some modifications um, to some of our processes. Uh, the tanning program um, from the last inspection or last report or the most recent one, I'm sorry, that I just submitted, um, we have completed all those inspections now. Um, I think they said there was a few left to do, but we just got those all done. We had one facility, we finally got confirmation on closing and another one, the inspection finally, um, we were able to meet up with the people. It was kind of an appointment only thing. So uh, that those are done. But yeah, all of our programs are are doing well. I tried to, you know, highlight some of the different things in there as far as citations and things we're doing. Um, our on-site program, uh, we did a, on November 7th, uh, did a ride, um, DNR came and did a ride along with us to kind of audit how we do our pumper inspections. Uh, that is where we, the septic pumper trucks, when we uh, inspect their trucks, their facilities, and where they may land apply. Um, so uh, they got to see how we did that, and uh, we got some good feedback from him as well as far as, you know, uh, things that he would look for and things what we don't. So um, it, we have some changes we're going to be making for that, but all in all, it was a positive experience and um, for both DNR and our department, and everything went well um, for where we went. So um <laughs> The ARPA grant, that was the one uh, that from Septics, we had 12 of them that had been applied for. And uh, so far we have eight that have been installed and three pending um, installation. Might see one of those actually get in this year still, but probably those will be deferred till spring. And then we still have uh, one uh, application that IFA has that we're uh, pending approval. So the money is kind of there, uh, but they had to go back and do some changes to their application and uh, they wanted more information. So hopefully we'll get that done and then they'll be ready to go in the spring. So it was looking pretty positive though. And then we still have the Story County Housing Trust uh, Septic Grant. We've only had one system installed. I do, did receive another application just last week um, going through and doing um, doing that income review right now for that verification process. And we had a couple other um, applications that came in uh, previously, but they didn't meet the income guidelines. So we weren't able to use those. Um, so we'd like to see more done with that, but it was kind of a challenge with being uh, without having the admin and being short staffed and different things. So uh, we're gonna try to do a few things um, this winter, maybe have a couple go in in the spring so that we can get done. Do you know how many applications you had total for the um, housing trust? I do have a, a list. I think it wasn't very many. I think we had like six. Like, well, I mean, there was people that called and we'd give them the income guidelines and then we wouldn't get an application. So, um, but I think we had like maybe, let's see, it might have only been like four, I think four or five that we've actually had come in and <laughs> stuff. The application is on on the website. Where's the application? Do they have to ask for it? They usually will call us and we'll email it to them. I think there was, I don't know if, the, I think that just basically, I think on the website, it said to contact us. And now that Allie's here, she's learning the website stuff. So it'll be put up. Okay. But yeah, I think it just kind of said to call us and then we would email it out to them because we generally would talk to them and say, here's the income requirements and here's how it works. And then mm -hmm. um, email them the packet that would be done. So yeah, we'll get, I don't, if it's not up there, we'll be getting that up there soon. Um, Allie just kind of started her like learning the website stuff. So she's going to be working on that stuff. We have a lot of updates to do to the website. And the ARPA grant that you're talking about, is that for septics? That one was for, for septics too. So that one was through uh, IFA, through IFA. And okay. yeah, that they did that. That was kind of the year before, 
I think that kind of we started that. Okay. That kind of came out at the same time with a lot of the different mm-hmm. um, monies that were available from the state and they put it out to um, everyone at the counties. So then if, if someone doesn't, wouldn't qualify for the housing trust funding, would they p- potentially qualify for the IFA funding? Um, those applications had to be in by a certain date. So that's done. Um, okay. But if they don't qualify for the um, housing trust one, we have, uh, there's an OSWAP loan that we talk to people about. And so that we have, so anybody that didn't qualify for that, we gave them that other information. And I did have probably three people this year that use the OSWAP loan and that is a state funded program. Cool. So thanks. Mm-hmm. And then, um, so, and then just kind of some department and staff stuff. Uh, we did do two ride alongs uh, since I was last here and that was in August and in November. Uh, we had a good time, um, saw a lot of things and we really enjoyed uh, having you guys come along. And it's always open should anybody else want to do it. So uh, we did fill our admin position in September. And so we're now fully staffed. And that's been very nice. Uh, We've been able to get quite a bit done. And having that increased coverage in our office has been very beneficial uh, for our installers and for the public calling. There's several times where we'd all be out in the field, especially during the summer. And um, people would call and leave messages. And then usually call again and leave another message. And so having that increased coverage has been very beneficial to our department. And then um, we're still uh, working on a lot of different committees. Um, And then Laura and I both attended the regional conference up in North Dakota for IEHA. She received a partial scholarship to attend this. Uh, She, they had a lot of sessions on food uh, things. She's going to be testing for her national license. And that's a program that we don't we I can't give her any experience in. So she was able to um, take some sessions related to that to help her pass her exam. So um, sometime I think this year she'll be taking that exam and hopefully passing and that'll be good. I do have uh, with the um, HHS realignment, um, I do have a meeting scheduled on December 12th uh, with my uh, association, the Iowa Environmental Health Association and Dr. Cruz. Uh, we're going to be having a meeting with him, kind of talking about the realignment and how it directly relates to environmental health in Iowa. So hopefully, um, maybe mid-December, we'll have some more information for you. And I know that they were supposed to send out a report in October, uh, tell us things. We have not received anything yet as to what's going on. So we're still kind of in the dark on how that realignment is going to totally impact us. And then... Um, just kind of a heads up, we do have our annual septic conference in Cedar Rapids this year, and all of our staff does attend that. So Allie will be here covering our office during that time. So, but that is primarily all I have for you. Do you guys have any questions? What I heard about the uh, public health uh, transfer thing, the reorganization, was that's pretty much a given? Yeah. So yeah, it's pretty much- um, It needs legislative action. Yeah. So yeah, it'll basically, it's been done. It's just a matter of where the where everything falls, like the realignment, um, they're restructuring HHS. We've started getting contacts for different programs, but we haven't officially like a lot of our programs. We still haven't received like who our contact person is, or um, if we have questions, who we're supposed to go to. So mm-hmm. we're still figuring all that out. So. I don't have a question, just a comment, uh, mainly for my colleagues in the public. Here is. December 5th is our next Board of Health meeting, and we're going to be recognizing Dr. Kluge, who will be retiring at the end of the year. I think it's after 47 or 49 years on the Board of Health. 49. Wow. Yeah. So um, we have a few things kind of planned to recognize that too, so that'll be good. I don't I don't have any questions, but I, I just want to say I had a great time hanging out with you guys and going out and seeing all the things that you do. And I just want to um, share how impressed I was with, with your customer service and how kind you both were to the folks that you were talking to. Um, no question was a, was a dumb question like that. Like there were lots and lots of questions from the homeowners yeah. and a lot of them, I didn't know the answer to either. So I was glad they were asking them. Mm-hmm. Um, but I could see someone being hesitant to ask questions and the way you both responded to them. 
um, you know, you encouraged more questions and, and again, just the, the kindness and the willingness to go above and beyond, um, was just fantastic. And it just, I left that day feeling like, you know, I, I hope more people have an opportunity to interact with, with you and just, just a refreshed feeling of how awesome Story County is and, and just, um, how grateful I am to have so many wonderful people working here. Well, thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you. I don't have anything else. Right. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks for running upstairs. Catch. And I've had a kind of busy uh, fall and winter, so I haven't been able to ride along yet. But after budget work sessions next year, I'm going to get in touch with you because I'd like to do that as well. Yeah, definitely. And after the first of the year, we'll start doing some indoor stuff like with pools and things like that. And then, mm -hmm. of course, spring usually ends up being a better time to go out and see things. So we'll figure yeah. it out. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. You're going to be around later. I'm going to stop talking. Okay. Okay, we will move back to um, additional items. Um, discussion and consideration of Sheriff's Office uh, to purchase patrol vehicles for FY24. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Nope. But, yeah, no. Uh, no. Good morning, board. Good morning. Uh, thanks for the time this morning. Sorry we're late. We had a few things going on this morning. Um, we come before you this morning to uh, talk about our vehicle purchase for FY24. As we all know, we've been struggling through the FY23 and FY24 budget years to uh, not only order the vehicles, but to get them in. Uh, we do have an order placed for the FY23s, five of those, uh, which we expect to come in hopefully within the next uh, handful of months. Uh, what we're asking for today is to move forward on the uh, ordering of six F-150 police uh, packaged pickup trucks. Um, the order window for that is open now. Um, and we need six of those. However, it would require us to overspend the budgeted amount for this year by 11,000 or roughly 11,000. And so on a 30,000 foot view, that's that's our request today of the board. And any questions, I'll let uh, Lieutenant Lee and Ellis kind of get into the specifics. Is it six or seven? I think it says N7 and FY24. Six. Well, because the two years kind of ran together okay. with the carryover. So out of the 14 budgeted in FY23 and FY24, we've received three. We have another five coming. So there's six more we need to purchase gotcha. to fulfill the number we need. Okay. Well, kind of hard to do your job for the deputies to do their jobs out on the roads unless they got a vehicle. And you've yeah. had some bad luck with some lately. So yep. um, I think that it makes sense to do it. And I'm not $11,000. It's not a huge amount there, mm -hmm. given what we've got going. So um, I don't have any questions. I don't either. Mm -hmm. okay. um, I would move uh, authorization the sheriff's office to purchase patrol vehicles for FY24, 6 2024. Board F-150 responders for 297-912. Second. Moved and seconded. Merkin. Aye. Edens. Aye. Basil. Aye. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Uh, no departmental reports, other reports, um, any upcoming agenda items? I will have one with uh, Salvation Army uh, next week. Okay, and mm -hmm. I expect to have one um, also uh, from um, Story County College Access Network, just asking for sponsorship of um, one event for um, a Latino um, group coming up. I hope to have something soon on the uh, broadband grant with Co Hotel, but we had to postpone our meeting, and I'm hoping we have it next Monday. I think I've got to hear back from some people, but. They did not get all the money, so we'll have to figure out what we're going to do with our match on that. But we'll get we'll get something back to the board soon. Okay. Um, moving to public comment number two, this comment um, period is for the public to address topics not on today's agenda. Board may not take any action on comments due to requirements of open meetings law, but may do so in the future. Anyone wishing to make public comment, you can raise your hand on Zoom or step forward to the table. 
seeing no one raise their hand or step forward, we'll close com public comment number two and move to liaison assignments, committee meeting updates and announcements from the supervisors, Supervisor Heddens. Sure, here this afternoon, I've got on my calendar a second tier canvas. Um, tomorrow, I'll be here all day. I do have a lunch meeting over noon over in Ames, so I'll be gone for a couple hours and then back out of the office Thursday and Friday for, for Thanksgiving. Uh, Monday, I'll be in a, uh, probably about nine o'clock. I have a appointment at 7.30. And then I have a meeting with Warren Phillips um, with SIPs at one, just doing it Zoom. So a little bit light because of the holiday mm -hmm. right now, but then the week after it starts gearing right back up again. <laughs> Supervisor Merkin? Yeah, it sounds like we're all going to have a little bit of a break. And, and given the last few weeks and what we've got coming up, um, a lot of interviews, a lot of meetings, that will be good. And uh, Greg, in case you're looking at your phone, Colo's Tuesday hold, not Monday. Good. Good. I just wanted to check that. So um, same meetings that Supervisor Heddens has this afternoon, this afternoon. And I have a meeting tomorrow morning, then I will be off. And Monday, looks like I've got some, yeah, some meetings scheduled here and there. And then we'll be back in on Tuesday. Nice well, long weekend. Today is usually my busy week. So I have um, NACO Central Region meeting this afternoon and then Story County Housing Trust Board and then second tier canvas. And then I have um, Sirha in Grimes tonight. Tomorrow I will be um, doing my um, kind of ride along with the jail. I'm gonna be spending time um, in the jail, just kind of seeing how, how they do everything that they do. Um, and then Thanksgiving, a nice little break. And then Monday, I've got NACO Cult Arts and Culture Commission meeting, and then um, Deputy Aaron Kester is retiring. Um, and so his reception is Monday afternoon also. And then I have a boost meeting in the evening on Monday. Um, and then just making sure you guys have on your calendar for Tuesday evening, um, the um, Collins events. Yeah. The main street the, project the, yeah yeah. Yep. yeah which is i think a cl closed but it's just a few people it's from six to eight but i think it's you could i think it's more of an open house you don't yeah, i don't know that from it's from six a, to eight yeah yeah and that's it so um anything further i move we adjourn second moved and seconded head and aye merkin aye basil aye we're adjourned thank you